G'day, Mike Rhodes from agencysavvy.com. And I have the great pleasure to be on Measure Summit 2020. I'm gonna be explaining my remarketing grid, how to choose remarketing audiences and how to use data to improve the ROI of your remarketing. <laughs> Hey there, Magic Geeks. Julian here, back with another video. Today, we have Mike Rhodes from Web Savvy on the channel. In 2018, Mike's agency was named by Google as one of the top 18 agencies worldwide. He is also the author of The Ultimate Guide to Google AdWords with Perry Marshall, which is the world's best selling book on Google Ads or AdWords with over 100,000 copies sold. There is unlikely anyone else who knows more about Google Ads than Mike, so I'm very excited that Mike made the trip to our virtual stage for our upcoming event, Measure Summit, where he conducted a session about data-driven remarketing. Today, we're gonna hear a little part from his session where he specifically talks about how to split up your audiences to have the most effective remarketing campaign. You can catch the whole session as well as hearing from many others at Measure Summit 2020. Just head over to measuresummit.com and get your free ticket right now. All right, we got lots to cover, so let's dive in to the Measure Summit session with Mike Rhodes. The solution is pretty obvious. We need to treat different people differently. Now, Google would say, well, leave it to us. We can do that, right? Trust us, let the machines take over. And if you do any kind of smart display or smart shopping, then Google is trying to do that. I don't believe that Google has maybe necessarily your best interest at heart. Maybe they're not trying to optimize your profit as much as maybe they're optimizing their own. So we're not gonna assume that that's the best way to go. We're gonna look at how we would do this manually. You can always test Google's machine learning against this later on. But if you understand the fundamentals of how to do this and how to think about this, you'll be in a much better position. So the framework that we're going to use is the remarketing grid. So let's start big picture. We've got this big lump of people, all of the recent visitors to our website. And then we're gonna take this big box and we're gonna to start to split it up a couple of ways. Down the side here, we're gonna think about levels of intent. What signals, what data do we have on our visitors where we can start to, to break them into different buckets? And then of course, time across the bottom. So intent, we're gonna think of like a funnel, less intent at the top, more intent at the bottom. And time obviously goes from left to right. So the more recent, the sooner, yeah, sooner is probably the wrong word, but the more recent that somebody was on our site, they're gonna be on the left-hand side of this box. Uh, <laughs> the, the later, yeah. <laughs> if it was a long time ago that they were on our site, then they're gonna be over on the right-hand side. So the best corner of this box, the, the people that are most likely to convert if we were to show them an ad, are in the bottom left corner of this box, and then it goes out from there. That kind of makes sense? Good. Okay, how many buckets? This is the question I always get asked. If, it, if we're talking about breaking our remarketing lists into buckets, how many should we use? And you're gonna look at, and this isn't perfect, but everybody wants a number. So we're gonna look at the total amount of traffic that your website gets, and then we can start to think about how detailed the strategy needs to be, and roughly, this isn't a golden you know, fixed rule here, but just rule of thumb, how many buckets should we have or audiences? So if you get less than 10,000 sessions a month, then you're thinking maybe very, very basic, one or maybe two buckets, and that's all you need. If you've got a bit more traffic, if you're getting you know, roughly between 10 and 100,000, then a little bit more detailed, a fairly simple strategy, and I would recommend probably between two and 10 buckets. You're kind of aiming for each bucket to have five to 10,000 people in, but it's not exactly that but roughly speaking. And then if you've got a bigger site, 100,000 a month, then we need to get a bit more advanced. We can afford to get a bit more nuanced, a bit more detailed with our strategy and how we set things up. So just take that as a rough, rough guide. So if we start to think about intent first and thinking about people sort of as they fall down the funnel, having more intent, we've got a whole bunch of people at the top here that are not interested. So we're just simply gonna split everybody that comes to our site into these three buckets. 
there were a whole bunch of people that were not interested. And that could be just as simple as the people that bounced. You know, those one page views, they came, they saw, they puked, as Avanash would say, and they're gone. And that might be 30, 40% of your site, hopefully a little less, who knows. At the bottom, we've got the people that converted, that bought, that filled in a form. And then the bit that we're most interested in here is those in the middle, people that showed a level of interest. There was some sort of behavior that showed they were interested, but they haven't bought yet or they haven't filled in a form yet if it's a, a lead gen site. And now taking that middle chunk, we could, if we wanted to, if we have enough traffic to make it worthwhile, let's say so probably yeah, a minimum 5,000, but sort of 10,000 a month and up, then we might just focus here. So let's not show remarketing ads to the people that weren't interested in what we have. Let's not show remarketing ads to the people that bought, let's just take that interested group and start to break those into chunks. And I'm gonna use the example of from Ecom here, but it might be just as simple as, okay, somebody that's maybe only looked at the homepage and then dropped into a category or two. So they've only looked at category level pages. They're not, there's not a huge amount of intent there. Somebody that's looked at a product, and we could get really detailed with that, they've looked at a certain number of products or they've spent a certain amount of time on a product page if we wanted to, but let's make it easy. They've just looked at products, they're a product viewer. Well, that's a, the next level of intent. And then those people that made it all the way down through to the cart, but remember, not those ones that have bought yet, that's gonna be, because we're coming down the page, remember that bottom left corner, that's our best possible group of people that we could target with remarketing. For a lead gen site, it might be slightly different. And we'll talk about this a little bit later, but you, you would use other signals of intent because obviously you don't have product pages and cart page. Then you might be thinking more in terms of how long did somebody spend on the site? I'll show you an example of that in a little bit, or maybe how many pages did they look at? So you're gonna just look through analytics and find other signals that show that level of intent. And just break those visitors into two or three buckets. That's good enough to start with. Now, if we think about time going from left to right across our grid, generally speaking, these are the only three buckets that you're going to need. So I often will think about that first week. Those are, remember that bottom left corner, those are the best people I can show an ad to. So somebody that's left my site within the last few days, they are much more likely to convert and I show them an ad than somebody that was on my site six months ago. So generally that, you know, diminishing returns, once it's been more than 30 days since somebody was on your site, then there's a much less chance that they're going to convert. Now, I've said these are the main three buckets. So these are the main three buckets that we'll use to show ads to, but there's two other lists that I would recommend that you build. So whenever you build a, a, an audience or a list inside of Google, you have some sort of rule that defines who they are, which is that intent down the side. So somebody that looked at my cart and a member duration. How long has it been since they were on my site? So in order to use this strategy, we'd have to set up three different lists. We'd have to set up a seven day list, a 15 day list and a 30 day list. And then we can do some magic on the back end to say to Google, hey, show my ads to this particular group of people. There's two other lists that you should think about setting up. We always, always, always set up a one day list. Now I'm not gonna recommend that you try and show ads to that group of people because that group of people is usually quite small. Again, if you've got a huge site, lots of traffic, then the strategy changes, but this broad three buckets works for most people most of the time. The benefit of that one day list is you can see very, very easily and quickly if anything is broken in your code. So if you only set up these three lists, it might be quite a while, let's say code broke on a major page or the remarketing code just disappeared from your site. It might take you a few days before you notice that that audience was getting smaller, your results were getting worse. But if you have that one day list and that goes to zero, you've got this instant canary in the coal mine that says, yeah, we got a problem with the code, we need to go fix something. The other list you wanna build is a big long-term list, something like a 365 days, a one year list. Because 
if you think about you know, how you use your email list every now and again you want to reach everybody that you've touched before and say hey we've got this new product that just came out or thank you for donating to this cause that we were a part of or no our ceo didn't really do that here's our side of the story i don't know um there's all sorts of reasons why you might want to reach everybody and you'd probably send an email at that point but if you've got this big audience everybody that's been on my site in the past year then at least you've got that you know keep your powder dry you're not going to try and show ads to that group of people very often but it's useful to have there all right so there you have it this was a sneak peek from the session with mike rhodes from web savvy at measure summit 2020 he gives quite some more interesting insights about audiences and how to set up the best remarketing campaign in his session so if you are interested to see more you can sign up to measure summit at measuresummit.com and get your free ticket for this event today we have more sessions from Christa Seiden to Seymour Hava, Brian Clifton, Leah Pika, and many others. So don't miss out. And I hope to see you at Measure Summer 2020. And as always, my name is Julian. Till next time. <laughs>